Greetings and welcome to another Pokemon 2019 or Pokemon Journeys anime episode review. This time I'm talking about episode 59, so let's get to it. Episode 59 begins with Go, who dreams that his parents are both Rillaboom. Now, this is Rillaboom's first appearance in the main anime, so it is bizarre that this first appearance is in a dream, and a dream where Go's parents have transformed into Rillaboom at that, which makes it even more strange. The dream ends with Go's mom saying, here, take care of your little brother, and she places a Grookey on Go's arm. Go then wakes up from this dream in a panic, and he realizes that a Grookey is indeed holding on to his arm. Grookey is also sleeping. I guess that Go had such a weird dream because of Grookey. Grookey, for whatever reason, influenced Go's dream. It's like when a character has a nightmare because a ghost or a spirit is haunting them. Go is initially surprised to see Grookey, but he soon tries to catch it while it sleeps. However, Go is on able to catch Grookey because it already belongs to someone else, and I love how Go's Pokedex screams don't be a thief when Go tries to catch Grookey. Grookey soon wakes up and then starts hitting everyone on the head with its stick. I guess this is how Grookey says hello. Now it is curious that Grookey is different from other Pokemon in the anime when it comes to speaking. Normally Pokemon in the anime will speak in one of two ways. They will either say their name or part of it like Pikachu does, and this is different in Japanese and in English because most Pokemon have different names in both languages. Or, Pokemon will just sound like a normal animal does, like Lucario, meaning that they will do things like growling, for instance. Grookey, however, does neither, as it clearly says Grookey when it speaks, which is odd, because Grookey's name in Japanese is Sarunori, so it should say Saru or Sarunori instead of saying Grookey. <laughs> Now, maybe Grookey is saying Uki, which is the sound a lot of monkeys or primates make in anime, and Uki does sound like Grookey. Grookey, Uki. But I think that it is saying Grookey, which is again odd. Maybe they did this precisely because Grookey and Uki sound very similar, so it's like a pun, which is something the Pokemon anime loves to do. Or maybe they are just referencing its English name by having it say Grookey instead of Sarunori. It would be funny if in the English dub, Grookey says Sarunori or Saru so that the dub is the reverse of the normal Japanese audio. So, Mr. Mime walks into the room and Grookey tries to greet Mr. Mime as well, but Mr. Mime puts its Kung Fu training to good use and it easily avoids Grookey. Mr. Mime then taunts Grookey, which angers it, so Grookey decides to keep trying to hit Mr. Mime, but it can't land a single hit. Grookey keeps trying, but it soon stops because it gets hungry, so Ash, Pikachu, Go, and Grookey sit down to eat breakfast. Now, Go says that Grookey is like Ash, because like Ash, Grookey also shuts down when it's hungry. Grookey is also gluttonous, since it eats all the food in its plate and still wants more food, which it tries to take from Pikachu, who refuses to give any food to Grookey. Grookey is also stubborn, and it hates to lose, as shown when it kept trying to hit Mr. Mime, after Mr. Mime avoided it. Grookey was also easily triggered by Mr. Mime's taunt, which shows that it really is a sore loser and it does not back down from a challenge. All of these are qualities that Ash has, so Grookey is like Ash in several ways, which might give the impression that Ash will be the one to catch Grookey, but unfortunately this is just misdirection. They are intentionally misleading us, or it's simply a coincidence. Grookey is angered because Pikachu refuses to hand over his food, so Grookey uses its stick to flip Pikachu's plate. What a troll. Afterwards, Grookey runs around, causing chaos all over the place. Eventually, Grookey runs into Chloe, who was on her way out. Like it did with everyone else, Grookey jumps on Chloe's head. However, instead of hitting her, Grookey simply makes a complete mess of Chloe's hair. Grookey then jumps on poor Eevee as well. Pikachu and Yamper try to stop Grookey, but they can't, which leads to a hilarious moment. Grookey is just a big troublemaker and it really enjoys pranking others, like not even Gengar enjoys trolling others this much. Pikachu and Yamper are understandably angry at Grookey, so they decide to attack it with Thunderbolt and Spark respectively, but Grookey avoids the attacks and everyone other than Grookey ends up getting shocked while Grookey laughs. Grookey finally settles down, so Go explains the situation to Professor Cerise, Krisa, and Ren. 
Ren jokingly says that maybe it's Gengar's fault that Grookey appeared out of nowhere. It's funny that whenever something strange happens in Ceres Institute, everyone always blames Gengar, or rather Ash and Ren always blame Gengar. Because like I mentioned earlier, Gengar is known for being a prankster. And every time Gengar is blamed for something, it appears to show its anger or disapproval of the fact that someone suspects it. This time it is no different. Gengar appears behind Ren and it holds Ren like, what did you just say? I dare you to say that again, and Ren quickly apologizes for suspecting Gengar. Ash and Gold decide that they should search for Grookey's trainer and they will do so with Yamper's help. They take Yamper to their room so that Yamper can pick up on Grookey's scent. Yamper starts following the scent which leads to the roof of Ceres Institute. Ash and Gold see that the door is open so they realize that Grookey came in through here. Yamper continues to track Grookey's scent, which takes the search to a house in the city. Grookey quickly leaps into the yard of the house. Ash and Go think that this is where the trainer is, however, this is not the case. Instead, Grookey just wants to continue being a walking disaster. After a short while, a dodrio jumps over the fence surrounding the house with Grookey on its back. And Grookey rides off alongside its noble steed while Ash and Go chase after them, which is pretty funny. Ash and Go return the dodrio to its trainer and they apologize for the trouble. However, it does not take long for Grookey to get into more trouble. The search for Grookey's trainer leads to a park. Grookey runs off on its own and it runs into a Marowak. Grookey proceeds to hit Marowak in the head, which leads to a fight between them. Ash and Go apologize for the trouble yet again, and then they notice that Grookey shuts down again due to hunger. So they all sit down to eat. They once again talk about how Grookey and Ash are similar. At this point, I thought that they were just rubbing salt in the wound. Though at this at this point, there was no wound yet, but I knew it was coming, so the fact that they kept bringing up that Ash and Grookey are similar only served to annoy me. Also, the fact that Ash and Grookey are so similar, and the fact that Grookey appears in the second ending theme alongside Pokemon that Ash owns, seems to indicate that they wanted to trick us into thinking that Ash would catch Grookey. Or maybe, the original plan was to have Ash catch Grookey, and this was changed for whatever reason. Maybe they thought it would be cool because it is a fairly unique twist, since most people would expect that Ash would be the one to catch Grookey. But considering that they also fooled us into thinking that Ash would catch Sobble in one of the special previews, I think that they are just playing us at this point. Regardless of the reason for their misdirection, there is no denying that they definitely had us in the first half. As it eats, Grookey notices that some nearby plants are withered, so Grookey revives them using its stick, which shows that Grookey can heal plants. Ash says that Grookey is nicer than it appears, and Go says that it's probably just playing around. So, Grookey hits Go in the head. It's like Grookey is saying, oh, you think that I am playing around? You're wrong. This is playing around. The search continues, and the scent takes Yamper to the front of a shop. Ash and Go head inside where an employee tells them that the surveillance cameras might have picked up something. So, Ash and Go check the footage. The recording shows that on the previous night, Team Rocket's gacha machine was dropped in front of the store, and a Pokeball was dispensed from it, and inside said Pokeball was Grookey. At this point, I clapped my hands, pointed at the screen, and said, called it. In my preview discussion on this episode, I said that this would be the case, that Grookey's trainers would end up being Team Rocket. I said that Grookey is probably one of the Pokemon in the gacha machine. Now, what ends up happening is not exactly like the scenario I described in that video, but I was still right for the most part. Ash and Go are understandably shocked by this revelation, and they question Grookey about this outside the store. And Grookey hides behind Pikachu, I guess because it does not want to admit that it does belong to Team Rocket, or maybe it doesn't want to be questioned about it. A net then falls on Pikachu and Grookey, and of course, Team Rockets are the one who threw the net. They reveal that they are here for Pikachu and for Grookey. Ash sends out Farfetch, who uses Night Slash to cut the net, and then it uses Brutal Swing on Team Rocket. Now, it is odd that Ash uses Farfetch here, because normally, in an episode like this, Ash would either use Pikachu, which he of course can't use in this instance because Pikachu is trapped, or Ash would use Lucario. I did find it strange that he used Farfetch, but considering that Farfetch will likely evolve in the next episode, it's likely that they wanted to give Farfetch some extra screen time since it won't be a Farfetch for much longer. Team Rocket soon call for their gacha machine, which dispenses only one Pokemon 
Pokeball instead of the usual two. Now this has happened before and in the past this meant that it was a very strong Pokemon. However in this case, the Pokeball is empty. And it turns out that it's empty because the Pokeball they got is Grookey's Pokeball. Now Team Rocket is confused by this which indicates that they did not know beforehand that Grookey was a Pokemon from the Gacha Machine. Jessie then sarcastically says that if it really is Grookey's Pokeball, then if she says return Grookey, Grookey should return to the Pokeball. And indeed, Grookey is pulled back into the Pokeball, much to the surprise of Team Rocket. Meowth then uses a smoke bomb to cover Team Rocket's escape, and so they banish alongside Grookey. Go notices that Grookey left its stick behind, so he picks it up. Go is also clearly very sad because Grookey was taken away. The episode then cuts to Team Rocket's hideout, where Grookey notices that it lost its stick, so it starts looking for it in a nearby box. However, it turns out that this box belongs to Morpico, and Team Rocket are alarmed by the fact that Grookey is messing with the things in the box. Morpico soon appears, and it is angry because it sees that Team Rocket have Morpico's things in hand, which they picked up after Grookey threw them aside. Team Rocket tries to explain that they are not to blame, but Morpico does not listen, and it uses Aura Wheel to chase Team Rocket around their hideout. It's funny how Morpico does not belong to Team Rocket, but it is still a Pokemon that chooses to stay with them, and so it is a source of comic relief like Beware was in the Sun and Moon series. Of course, this is not the first time that Morpico Pico has been shown with Team Rocket, but this is the first such episode that I review. If you exclude episode 28, which is where more Pico first appeared, and thus more Pico was not Team Rocket's, I guess, companion at this point. So I did not have the chance to talk about more Pico being with Team Rocket until now. As more Pico chases Team Rocket around, Grookey is shown to be very sad because it can't find its stick. It also remembers Go, which makes it even more sad. Meanwhile, Go is also thinking of Grookey. Ash says that Grookey belonging to Team Rocket was unexpected, and he hopes that Grookey is having fun at least. Go says that he hopes so too. The episode cuts back to Team Rocket's hideout where Grookey notices that the door is open, so it sneaks out while Team Rocket sleep. I wonder why they left Grookey outside of its Pokeball. They should have known that it would try to escape. The next day, Go is outside of Ceres Institute with Yamper. Go wants to return the stick to Grookey, and Ash decides to tag along. The episode cuts back to Team Rocket's hideout yet again. They are frantically searching for Grookey inside of their hideout. They say that since Grookey belongs to Team Rocket headquarters, they can't just lose it. So they head outside to search for Grookey. Again, this would have been prevented if they just kept Grookey in the Pokeball, and this would have also prevented the terrible thing that happens later. Ash and Go follow Yamper to the park that they were in earlier in the episode, but Team Rocket and Grookey are nowhere to be found. Go is disappointed, but Grookey soon emerges from the flowers it revived the last time they were here. Grookey and Go then hug, and Go returns the stick to Grookey. Now this is probably supposed to be a touching reunion and a happy emotional moment, but honestly, this just made my eyes roll so hard that I almost ended up blind. Team Rocket then show up, and they say that Ash and Go want to steal their Pokemon yet again. Oh, how the tables have turned. It really is ironic that now, Ash and Go are the ones taking a Pokemon from Team Rocket. Team Rocket tell Grookey to return to them, but Grookey refuses, so... Jesse tries to recall it into the Pokeball again, but this time Grookey avoids the Pokeball's laser. Pikachu then uses his tail to hit the Pokeball out of Jesse's hand, and Grookey uses its stick to shatter the Pokeball, so it's now free from Team Rocket. Grookey then turns to Go and it says something. Meowth translates what Grookey said. Grookey said that it wants Go to catch it. And at this point I was just like, why Grookey, why? Of all the things you could have said, why this? Jesse questions Meowth's action. She says, did you really have to translate that? And I was wondering the same thing. Why Meowth? Why didn't you just keep your mouth shut? Meowth realizes that he should not have done that, so he tries to cover it up by saying that he lied, but... It's too late. Go throws a Pokeball at Grookey. Jesse also throws a Pokeball at Grookey, who is now caught between two Pokeballs that are flying towards it. But Grookey uses its stick to return Jesse's Pokeball to her. And so, Grookey is then caught by Go. 
what can I say? I very much expected this to happen given the preview for this episode and given the episode itself, but I am no less disappointed by this. I don't want to go into full rant mode here because I already did that in the review of episode 53 where Go cut Suikun, and I made an entire video dedicated to discussing Go and his actions. So I will keep this short. I hate this, I hate this, I really do, and my disappointment is immeasurable. This is the first series in the history of this anime where a character other than Ash gets to catch more than one starter of the current generation. And it's also the first series where Ash does not catch a starter Pokemon, or at least the first series where Ash does not catch a starter of the current generation. There is still a lot left in this series, and I would not dismiss the fact that Ash could catch a starter of a previous generation that he did not get before. And I guess that I would not dismiss the possibility that he could still get one of the evolved forms of Sobol or Grookey. But both are very unlikely to happen, so this probably will end up being the first series where Ash does not catch a starter Pokemon, and this is just wrong. Also, several people commented on my preview discussion for this episode, and they said that they would rather have Team Rocket keep Grookey instead of Go, and I gotta say that I do agree with this. Grookey could even take part in Team Rocket's usual routine, and it could be another comic relief sidekick like Morpico. So, Go catches Grookey, and it annoys me that Go looked at the Pokeball as it was shaking, like, will it work? Will it be caught? Like, seriously, Go? You almost always catch a Pokemon just by throwing the Pokeball at them. And this time, the Pokemon wanted to be caught by you, so I don't see why you expected anything else. Go then sends out Grookey, and he exclaims that Grookey is now with them, and James wonders what to do now. Jesse says that they should just go back to basics, so they try to catch Grookey and Pikachu the old-fashioned way. But Pikachu uses Thunderbolt on Team Rocket, and so... They blast off again. The episode then cuts to Ceres Park, where Go explains how he caught Grookey to everyone that was not there to see it. Ash notes that Grookey is getting along with Pikachu and Yamper, so Chloe wonders if Grookey will get along with Eevee as well. Eevee is wary at first because of what Grookey did earlier, but Grookey apologizes, so Eevee decides to forgive it. However, Grookey jumps on Eevee yet again, and Eevee runs off with Grookey on her back. Which means that once a troll, always a troll. And that's the episode. So normally, at the end of an episode review, I say that overall it was a good episode except for this or that part, but in this case, I will disregard this completely, or almost completely I should say, because I did really like Grookey's personality a lot. But besides this, I absolutely hated this episode. I really, really wanted Ash to catch Grookey. I already had to accept the fact that Go caught Score Bunny and Sobble, which goes against the norm that only Ash gets to catch more than one starter of the current generation in each series. And I thought that it will be fine in the end so long as Ash catches Grookey, meaning that he gets to catch at least one of the Generation 8 starter Pokemon, but nope, Go had to catch all three of them, leaving Ash with no starters. This breaks tradition in a very bad way. I waited months to finally see Grookey, and I hoped for all those months that Ash will be the one to catch Grookey, and in the end, I am left frustrated and disappointed. Grookey is like Ash in many ways though, so maybe Ash can still get Grookey once Go realizes that Grookey is a better match for Ash. And so, Go will give Grookey to Ash or something like that. But I did hope that this would happen with Sobol as well, which has not happened yet and probably won't ever happen. So while I would like to say that not all hope is lost, I think that it might be pointless to keep hoping that Ash will somehow get the starters that he deserved to catch. It might be hopeless to wish that this series will eventually correct itself, but hey, there is really no harm in holding on to an impossible dream. Still, this does not change the fact that Go continues to sour what would otherwise be a great series, and at this point, I just hope that Ash continues to get amazing Pokemon like Dragonite, Gengar, and Lucario, while Go's catching spree is toned down both in quality and in quantity, because if this continues, then Pokemon Journeys might go down in history as one of the worst, if not the worst, Pokemon series ever. But... That's the video. As always, leave your own thoughts down in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did and would like to see more like it, then please consider subscribing to my channel.
I love Pokemon and I love making videos on both the anime and the games. Also, please consider clicking the links on screen so that you can check out more videos like this right away. Thank you very much for watching and let's meet again in the next video.